Cayenne's. Um, secretly one of my two favourite races in the setting. Not because I give them any special treatment or any preferential treatment. Simply because um, I just like the way that, like, that they came out. And like the way that people naturally drift to them. That's the cool. No, I think I think there are a lot of cool races. So, the Achaeans. Or Achaeans. Can you pronounce it Achaeans? The perfect warriors, born amidst the smoky Gorgon Sea, on a nation of islands, raging green cyan waters. The Achaeans are elves of a different breed. Tall and built as if sculpted from marble, they pack powerful and leaf frames. These are these are big dudes. Normally, the, the height of an Achaean will go from anywhere from six foot five to seven foot two. They're they're very 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 large. You know, for, for who they are. So. They sport the pointed ears of their race, however their facial features are not as angular and delicate as their elf cousins. The Achaeans are figures with faces as rugged as a cliff face, with a temperament to match. Predatory and laconic, pragmatic and cold, the Achaeans are seen as the perfect mercenary, and it, and it is as such individuals that, make, uh, that many make their fortunes. Reflexes and strength of Achaeans are known to be far beyond those of other mortal races, whilst their prowess with weapons of all shapes and sizes seems to be inborn. So these, these the children of Achaeans are learning to fight when they're three, four years old. This has led, this has led many to state openly that the Achaeans are the children of Ares. Whilst many of their greatest bloodlines were founded by the likes of Achilles, Diomedes, Odysseus, and Agamemnon, to name but a few. The Trojan War, the conflict that lit the tinderbox that was the Dragomachy, occurred on the doorstep of the Gorgon Sea. As such, the Achaeans are steeped in the storied history of this world and its many trials. So, Dragomachy actually kicked off very near to the Achaean homeland. A lot of people say that the uh, Achaeans are actually related to Ares, which in this setting, of course, is incredibly plausible. They could be related to Ares because he was an actual bloke who was walking around at one stage. Um, and it, we, we see from modern day, uh, modern day, we see from actual uh, myths and legends that Achilles was was descended from Ares. You know, but there are a lot of other and Zeus, sorry, and and a lot of other. Um, people like Diomedes were descended from the gods, so was Odysseus. So all of these famous Greeks are actually Achaeans in the setting. So, let's have a little look. Rather than being heroes, however, the Achaeans merely look like heroes of old. In reality, they are just, and if not more, flawed than any other mortal race. The Achaeans have a much darker side to their natural might. It is a known phenomenon that Achaeans can absorb memories simply from physical contact with other races, mainly using the tongue. This means that when an Achaean ingests the flesh of the slain, they absorb into them their memories, thoughts, and even skills. This ritual eating of their enemies has given the Achaeans a ferocious reputation as dark rumours swirl about their propensity for consuming the flesh of other races. Whilst this did occur in the years following the Dragomachy, it has since been outlawed within the Gorgon Sea for five centuries, and so no Achaean would stoop low enough to consume the flesh of another sentient mortal race. Or so they tell us. In reality, the different city-states of the Gorgon Sea cultivate predators that their warriors must then eat defeat and eat. This is known as the Proving. All right. So, as you may have seen, the two Achaeans in our setting, in our um, setting, in our campaign, have been eating the flesh of sentient races. Achaeans can smell that on another Achaean for days afterwards, and if our two Achaeans in the, the campaign come across any other Achaeans, 
they will be they'll be attempted to be slain on sight. Is that dishonorable? You consider that dishonorable? I warned him. Okay. Um, when an Achaean reaches their 18th year, they are thrown into a fighting pit to duel the sacred beast of their city to the death, with the winner consuming the flesh of the vanquished. Okay. Each island cultivates what are known as guardian beasts and are as diverse as diamanes, which are extremely large, ferocious lions, ligers, great bears, griffins, drakes, giant snakes, to name but name just a few. Most warriors within these city-states kill and consume many of the same creature during their lives, and so develop characteristics that are similar through this learning injection. Okay? Some develop the elongated canines and swiping reflexes of a lion, whilst others and see in the dark like a wolf. The mannerisms of such warriors also become rather animal-like, with many baring their teeth and snarling at enemies, using all compunction or of fear when in combat, or even developing the strength to tear someone limb from limb when, when cornered. This is something that the, the guys have read, but they haven't used in, in, the, in the game so far, is that um, depending on where, you, where you're from, if you're an Achaean and you eat an animal enough, you will start developing their characteristics or taking some of their skills. That's why Achaeans are termed as termed as the perfect warriors. You know, they can learn without doing anything. You know, they, they, they can actually they can kill you and consume you and learn all about you. Um, you know, it, they are the perfect invader. Yeah. The one saving grace of the world is that there's not that many Achaeans about. Within the city of Corinth, the Achaeans there have learned to develop their own venom with their gums that is then passed to enemies when bitten. Only the ruling class of this city has ever produced such a feat, and these characteristics are seen as a sign of great favour and prowess. So, again, so in Corinth, for instance, um, they have a lot of giant snakes. So, their warriors kill and eat giant snakes. They then develop poison glands, venom glands, in their mouths simply by doing this for generations and generations and generations. The Achaeans, as a culture, follow kings, and each of their cities on the Gorgon Sea elects a new king upon the death of the old one. Whilst not strictly patriarchal in terms of battlefield makeup, only male Achaeans can ever become kings. This is to establish and maintain links back to the glorious past of the united Achaea under Agamemnon before the Dragomachy. So Achaea was like a single united entity under Agamemnon before the Dragomachy came along. Women are permitted to fight in the military, and in some city-states are even allowed to hold political office and maintain lands and holdings of their own. Cough, Sparta, cough. The architectural style and warrior dress of the Achaeans is distinctly of the inner sea, with Corinthian helms being placed over steel and iron breastplates that are moulded to resemble the bodies of heroes of old. Reeves lock onto powerful legs, whilst the Achaean is protected by a large round shield known as the Hoplon. Right. This gives their Hoplite Infantry Corps their distinctive name, Hoplites. Although other others refer to them as Gorgonites, thanks to their propensity for having the Gorgon's head emblazoned on their shields. Achaeans carry the razor-sharp spear uh, into combat with a heft made from the finest cedar timber of Outrama, whilst the tips of these spears are honed to a wicked edge and are often coated in, in manticore venom. At the side of the Achaean is the Spatha short sword, a sword that curves inward slightly to aid in the hewing of limbs and moulded to the grip of the warrior carrying it. In battle, the Achaeans link their shields and advance in bulk, an unstoppable tumult of muscle, steel, and spear. They are more they are more than capable, however, of separating into smaller units that can devolve down into simple five man squads, then harry the flanks of an opponent break breaking away at the moment's notice, open up over flanks to expose. Okay, so, so they can they can expose flanks very, very, very quickly on the battlefield. You may wonder why we spend so much time covering the armaments of the Achaeans in comparison to other races. 
This is because the Achaeans are defined by how they go to war. They name Ares as their, as their blood ancestor and proclaim that, that his blood runs so strongly in their veins that they come to resemble him. Mostly dark-haired, with keen eyes, the Achaeans represent a dark and brooding presence in any room that they are in. They, they share a predatory instinct as natural hunters. Never expect intrigue or dishonesty, or, or dishonesty from an Achaean. As brutal as they are, the Achaeans see such behaviour as being completely below them. They have a disdain for the Stormblood in all of its forms that is hard to match. They see it as selfish and dishonourable, whilst an Achaean would never prey on the weak. Okay, that's a very important thing. Um, Achaeans may be brutal, they may be guys who are, um, you know, almost bullies in a sense, you know, yeah, but they're, no, 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 um, sorry, I'm going to retract that. They're not bullies, they're the anti-bullies. These are guys who are, they will only ever fight the strong, there's no honour in fighting the weak. They have a disdain for the weak, they can't stand you, they won't even fight you. That's how much they, they... That's a huge insult to them if they, they wouldn't even fight you. No. But they, they would never fight the weak. They would only fight the strong. Again, this attitude is not born from any benevolent sense of good or justice. The Achaeans simply see no honour in contending with weaklings. An Achaean will always seek the impossible, always challenge the mighty, will always push until the world pushes back. This has made them as feared as they are hated as respected as they are maintained a distance from. Many Achaeans join mercenary bands to fight for other kingdoms and empires within the scorched earth. Whilst the kingdoms of the Gorgon Sea are almost always at war over territory, resources, and the exorbitantly rich trade routes that pass through the, the eastern half of the of the inner sea, conflict with, the, with between the Gorgon kings and the kingdoms of Altrama are constant and bloody. Their enmity runs deep and the Achaeans never seem to go wanting when it comes to wars in which to slate their spears. So that's the Achaeans from start to finish there. The Achaeans in this setting obviously being uh, a part of uh, Greece. Um, a split apart Greece that is now thousands of little islands. But yeah. Um, one thing I, w I, w I would like to remind you of is that even in the last e episode with the Logia, obviously in their in their place you would have things like, um, as you say, you know, you know, dragons and things like that, and, and another fantastical beasts that are British in nature. There's even leprechauns an island, for God's sake. Whereas in Greece you have centaurs, you have um, giant snakes, you have the minotaur wandering around, you have all of these creatures that the that the Achaeans have to fight on a daily basis. So, those are the Achaeans. Hopefully we will see Achaea at some stage. You know? um, whether I do it in book form, it is in a book, but not for a long time yet. Whether we do it in book form or whether we do it in the, in the campaign setting, we'll see. Um, but since uh, the Achaeans, there are two Achaeans in our setting, I thought it best to cover the Logia, because we have one of those. And the Achaeans, well, tonight. Those are the Achaeans. Thank you very, very, very much for watching. And I'll speak to you on Monday. I'm going to be doing the next part of our campaign. So I'll see you.